Resurrection Sunday, and a lot of folks are wondering, well, what are we going to do about Resurrection Sunday? I don't want to miss church. And we've done discussing with uh, Brother Larry and the worship team as far as uh, what will we do. And there's several things we can do. Uh, weather permitting, we've looked at possibly just uh, taking uh, our music outside and having folks just pull up in the, the parking lot back in so that they're facing the church. And uh, just uh, get your lawn chairs out, your blankets, and distance yourself from each other. And we'll just have an outside service that would uh, touch the community as well. And uh, we would uh, just uh, have worship and uh, the word on Resurrection Sunday outdoors. And uh, that's a strong possibility. So those that are watching via uh, the live streaming of your able to get out, just kind of find a place to park. If you probably can, I imagine it will probably be well attended because usually, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, Resurrection Sunday is very important. Amen? And uh, I feel like that uh, as we celebrate the Passover, uh, we need to be mindful of the Passover lamb, Christ Jesus. And uh, something exciting is happening. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching what's happening in Israel or not. Uh, Brother uh, Bob, you would get some excitement out of this, but I just got uh, a news feed uh, that for the first time in oh, somewhere around, they said somewhere around 2,000 years, first time in 2,000 years, this past week they set an altar on the Temple Mount site, and for the first time in 2,000 years, there will be a blood sacrifice and altar of incense on the Temple Mount uh, this year. This year. I actually bleep inside because I remember uh, listening to the priest and those that were uh, Orthodox Jews were talking about that. And uh, on the on the plane ride home, I had uh, an old old priest talk to me on the way home, and he says. What was it that you most enjoyed about being in Jerusalem? And I told him that, and he was speaking very broken English. He was, he was speaking Yiddish. And as, as I spoke to him about the excitement of going under the catacombs with Perry Stone and walking up to the Temple Mount steps with Gideon, and I told him about uh, standing at the place that uh, Jesus stood where that they would have made sacrifice and offered him to God, he grabbed me by the arm because I spoke of the Temple Institute, the, the Research Institute, and the making of the articles of the Temple in order for that to take place again. And he said, you must pray for the peace of Israel that we, we begin this again, that Messiah come. Well, of course, I'm believing Messiah has come and is coming again. He's believing that Messiah is coming for the first time. So let me tell you this. It was an exciting time when we visited. How long has it been, Bob? It's been many years ago. But to hear that message or, or that, that feed saying that uh, this year in Jerusalem, you know, there's importance behind those words. Next year in Jerusalem was always the term. But this year in Jerusalem, they're setting up to make a offering unto, unto God for the first time in 2,000 years. And that's pretty powerful, I think. That's very powerful. And, and it's not that it hasn't been done before in other places, but on the place that God told them to. That's, that's some interesting things getting ready to take place. And a lot of folks don't understand a lot behind it, but the reality of it is this has to happen in order that the man of sin be revealed. You know, when you begin to understand some things connected to prophecy and the things that are coming about, you have to know some things about that that have to happen in order for the man of sin to be revealed. He's spoken of the prophet Daniel when he said that the abomination of desolation, when the man would stand up and declare himself as God and as if he were God. And uh, so we're, we're getting ready to see some things take place. And I, I believe that we are in the beginning of sorrows. A lot of people are, are worried that we're already past the fifth book of uh, Revelation. We are not. Uh, get, get, a, get a grip. We are not in a place of, of uh, uh, yet, but uh, we're getting there. We're headed that way. And we need to be mindful that the Word of God needs to be preached literally around the world. 
And uh, a lot of folks don't know this, but uh, the Muslim countries, there's conversions taking place where that uh, uh, Muslims are turning to Christ and uh, being baptized and, and, and then put to death. But the reality of it is, is the word of God is going forth and the power of God is being delivered into the lives of people. So get ready because we're going to see some things uh, take place. It's the most exciting time of the church, amen? Yeah. I'm believing that it's the most exciting of the times of the church. That the, you know, we, we were, I've heard people say, wouldn't it be something to live during the time of Peter, James, and John? And they were, they were the, I said, you know what? We're living on the most exciting times of the Word of God, where that His Word is being poured out, His life is uh, uh, being touched through the lives of people, and the power of His Spirit is so alive. And uh, a lot of people don't see that, but I do. And it reminds me concerning the word of the Lord even for this morning is that if you go with me to, the, to Luke's gospel, chapter uh, 19 is where I want to begin and take this up. But we're, we're living in a time right now where the uh, uh, Palm Sunday or, or uh, the week of passion begins. And we understand some things that when Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem, it set things in motion, not just for Jerusalem, but for the worlds that be, the, the powers that be. I, I understand that even from the time that Jesus was born, they tried to snuff out his life. You know what I mean? The, 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 the word of God has always been so powerful concerning these issues. And there's six things the Lord hates. And they're a proud look, a, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. I, I just have to focus right there for a moment. Because even at the time when Jesus was born and before, if you remember the plagues that were taking place at the uh, first Passover, what was, what was that final plague that was to be poured out? I, I, I get excited because you know what it was? It was the death of the firstborn. Yeah. And when you understand that, what happened when uh, Jesus was born? Herod set out a decree again. This message, this, this spirit of murdering children has always been from that time even forward lest this one that would come bring deliverance to the captives. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you something. God is raising up a generation of Joshua's that are going to go forth in power and demonstration of his spirit uh, like mighty warriors to do great exploits in these last days. I, I believe that the word of God is going to go forth in power. I believe that we're going to see revival, not like the revivals we've seen in our past. But I'm talking about revival where the, 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 the reapers are going to overtake the sowers. When the word of God goes forth, it's going to ignite hearts. A lot of folks don't understand this, but God is about to do something very powerful and very mighty in, right over the midst of the fears of the nations. Yeah. You know, the word of the Lord said there was a prophecy that was given yet once and again, and I will shake the nations. And the desire of every nation shall come. Because the gold is mine and the silver is mine. And he declared the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. So he declared it so that the word of God would have power in the earth. Amen. And he's always had a voice in the earth. Amen? Amen. And so as we begin to pick up this uh, uh, message here as Jesus enters Jerusalem. It says in verse 29 that it came to pass... When he was come nigh to Bethany, and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village over against you, in which you will find entering, you'll, shop, you'll find a colt, where there's never been a man sat on him, loose him, and bring him to me. A lot of folks say, well, that's stealing. No, he was borrowing the colt for a reason, because never a person had sat on him. We're, we're talking about authority and royalty coming into yeah. Jerusalem. I'm believing that God is raising up kings and priests uh, and those that will declare the word of the Lord with authority in this earth. I'm not talking about uh, just going through the motions of saying, yeah, we had church, uh, but I'm talking about those that will speak as dignitaries, uh, as ambassadors for Christ, uh, that will not be moved, that will not be turned uh, because of the voice uh, that God has spoken over their life. Watch this. Uh, and, uh, and as you go over there, loose him. And you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of him. How many would say today, the Lord has need in your life to loose some things off of you and through you? Amen. The Lord has need of you to loose some things 
for the use of the kingdom of God. How many willing to be used of God today uh, in the capacity uh, that this animal said, loose him and bring him. And if anybody asks what you're doing, say, the Lord has need of him. Amen? So a lot of folks may be thinking, well, today I don't have a job. I, I don't have anything to go. Listen, you're going to have something to go back to. Uh, and you're going to have a testimony uh, of the power of God when you go back to work. Uh, when you go back to the things that you're worried about even now. God is going to sustain and supply according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, this is so that your faith would not stand in man, but in the power of Almighty God. When you look at this, I need you to understand some things. Watch this. If you say, what's going on here? And say, the Lord has need of him. And they were, as they sent their way, found even as he had said to them. And when they were loosing the colt, owners of that colt said, why you loose the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereupon, and as he went, they spread their clothes in, in the way, and when they were come nigh, even now into the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Now, I want to tell you something. If you can only imagine, I, I have been there for the, for the descent off of the Mount of Olives uh, as they would come in. Remember, we went over to Bethany, uh, where the, the, the Machba uh, bath was, uh, and we, we came back through there just as Jesus would have walked that place. Uh, and he came back down the Mount of Olives, uh, past Gethsemane, uh, where everything was settled, uh, and he walked even towards Jerusalem. Uh, and the people began to shout uh, and to praise God for all that they had seen him do. Would the God of the people of the United States would begin to proclaim what God has done in their life on this glorious day of the Lord and begin to declare healing and restoration and the peace of Almighty God, power of deliverance to those that are bound, recovering of sight to those that are blind, binding up of the brokenhearted, and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And as we begin to open our eyes and ears to these things, watch uh, uh, what God begins to do. As he came near to the city, the word of the Lord says that he paused and he wept over the city. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, even as the heavenlies uh, are on fire with the power of Almighty God, uh, even right now, we're seeing signs and wonders uh, in the heavens uh, and in the earth. Uh, great signs uh, of earthquakes in diverse places, uh, different kinds of storms and activities. Uh, and we wonder, what is this? And people are in fear. Let me tell you something. I, I believe just like Moses. Somebody needs to come near. Somebody needs to behold. And stand and say. Behold the salvation of the Lord. Is there not a prophet in the land. That is not prophesying. Their own glory. Their own abilities. Their own get and gain. But let me tell you. When you begin to speak. The oracles of God. Jesus came with a mission. And it came to bring deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, the binding up of the broken. Listen, we're living in a time right now today where that the people have been disturbingly messed up, disturbingly tore up, disturbingly abused and molested. But let me tell you what the word of the Lord says here. He says as he comes into this place uh, with the cold, uh, they begin to shout and they begin to raise their voice with mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king that comes uh, in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Uh, and some of the Pharisees uh, and among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke your disciples. And he said to them, I tell you that if you these would hold their peace, uh, the stones will immediately cry out. And I'm going to tell you something. Today, we're seeing a time right now where people are saying, oh, you, you can't rejoice. Uh, let me tell you something. You can close the church house, uh, but you cannot close the church uh, because we are the church of the living God. His resident power lives and abides in our life. This is the mystery uh, that Jesus spoke of concerning us. Uh, Today, that have not.
not receive the visitation of the Lord. You know what? A lot of people are not walking in the counsel of godly wisdom because they have not opened their heart to that still small voice or the tugging on their heart. They are mandated by the purpose and the cause of the world. Hypnotized by the glory of the things that they see and want and desire. Can I tell you today that God is bringing the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ that is going to set hearts free. Delivering the minds of those that have been bound even held captive at the will of the enemy. God is about to open up some things in the earth. And as we celebrate this week of passion, let us begin to be mindful of all that he began to do in our life. Because you know what? That Don of the Della Rosa, as he began to walk the Della Rosa, something happened in the spirit. There was a shift of what was coming. And do you realize today that as we begin to open our eyes that Jesus is on the scene? Let me tell you, he is king and he is priest and he is Lord. The word of God says that when he comes, he'll have a name that no man knew, but he himself. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise. God is good in the house. He said they came and they began to shout to him, silence these multitudes. And he said, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones should immediately cry out. We happen to be where uh, that sermon was given and as the things were taking place and it is said in that little cold out valley uh, as the people begin to rejoice, uh, there's stones everywhere. You know why that he would say that after you have been there. But let me tell you this, there is a resonant sound that once it's spoken, it never goes away. It may echo in the chambers of these halls. It may echo in the wood. But let me tell you something. Science has proved this. That when the word goes out, it remains. That's why the word of God says it like this. That, 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 that we're not to have evil communication out of our mouth. And that we will give account of every idle word. Do you realize that when Jesus spoke... The word became resident in the earth. It did not return unto them void, but it accomplishes the thing whereunto he said it. Elsewise, the word of God so powerfully brought forth deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight from the blind, even as they began to call upon the name of the Lord. And when he had come near the city to behold it, he wept over it. I, I can't help it. You know, there, there's things that God begins to show you about the tears of Jesus. He wasn't weeping because they, 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 they were in a, a, a place of depression or they were a place of... Uh, the, what he was weeping over is that they didn't know that he was there for them. Do you know what I'm talking about? A lot of folks today, they, they'll talk about, well, I know God, but I really don't have a relationship with the Lord. I, I don't know him, know him. But let me tell you this. This is what it says. And when he came near the city, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known even thou, and in this day, the things which belong unto your peace. The things that belong to you. Yes, you're going to have wars and rumors of wars. Yes, a thousand is going to fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But if you only knew me and the things that I have for you in peace. See, there's a confidence that comes. I'm reminded of that. Big Arkansas boy that said that uh, in, during, during World War I, he was talking about, he was 17 years old, the first time away from his family. The battle was hot, and they were in the trenches. And the first sergeant called and said for, for someone to, to, to raise the ensign, to raise the standard, for it had been shot down. And that big Arkansas boy looked over at his First sergeant and said at 2 o'clock, exactly, I'll go out and I'll raise that flag. And as the story was told, at 2 o'clock, that big tall Arkansas boy crawled out of the, the foxhole, right out of the ditch uh, with fires, fight going all around him. And, he, and he, he crawled all the way to raise that standard and pick up the American flag and drive it into the ground. And then he crawled back into the hole. And the sergeant said, either that's the most brave or the most stupid thing I've ever seen in my life. And he says, well, I have, a, I have a, 
a story behind why that I knew I could do it at 2 o'clock. He said, back home, my mother told me that the prayer warriors, the ladies of the church would meet every day that I'm in the battlefield. They would meet every day at 2 o'clock. That they would begin to pray and intercede for me and my, the people around me. That they would pray and, and cry out to God for our safety. Every day at 2 o'clock, I knew that my mother was going to be praying. Every day at 2 o'clock, the ladies of our church were coming together for an anointed prayer time just for us. And I knew that if there was any chance of getting that flag, that, that standard stake again, that it was at that moment that the angels of heaven would cover us. Yes. I'm going to tell you something. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. Never negate the power of prayer of mom. Never negate the power of the prayer of grandmas. I have been the recipient of the blessings because of the prayers of the saints. Jesus wept over the city. He said, have you, have, if you'd only known, at least in this day, the things which belong into your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You know, I believe that we are a nation that is blessed. We're a people that is blessed beyond what we even understand. And because of the prayers of our forefathers and the moms and dads and grandmothers that prayed over this nation. You know, I, I can't help but believe that Betsy Ross, uh, as she sewed the stars and stripes together, that she prayed uh, over a nation that would stand for the freedom to worship God. Amen. See, the problem is, is we don't know the things that God has for us. But can I tell you this? I have not seen nor ear heard neither entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. But the Spirit of God will bring revelation and wisdom and understanding and give you the very vision to stand against all the wiles of the devil. Jesus said, if you had only known the things that belong unto your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round about, and keep thee in on every side. And they said, listen, you need to read that again. The enemy is going to come in and try to cast a trench around you to keep you in on every side. Silence your words. Silence your ability to stand together. But the word of God says it like this. If one of us can put a thousand to flight, yeah. two of us can send the legions fleeing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The word of the Lord says it was clear that if there be two or three gathered in my name, uh, there I would be in the midst. Uh, and if they agree, this is the tough part. Getting in agreement with the word of God. Yes. There is such division and controversy over the word of God because people will not study the word of God. So watch what it says. They will compass thee round about and keep thee in on every side and shall lay you even with the ground. And thy children within thee, they shall not leave in one stone upon the other because thou hast not known the time of my visitation. He's speaking concerning Jerusalem. Have you ever seen a time over the last 2,000 years where that a city or a nation has been such in controversy and, and, and just literally plundered? But God. Amen? Amen? There's a remnant that hangs on and will stand in the cliff of the rock and say, I know my Redeemer lives. I happen to believe that when we begin to open our spirit to the things of the spirit, God will begin to give wisdom and revelation and understanding of things that are coming. And in this week of passion, I believe that God would have us uh, not just to sit back uh, and, and grill out steaks in the backyard because we're home anyway. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, there's a purpose that God has to bring about in the lives of people. Uh, people hear will hear his voice. They're going to lay you even with the ground and your children within you. And they shall not leave one stone upon the other because thou knowest not the time of your visitation. And he went into the temple 
And he began to cast them out that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Listen, there was a call of the Lord to begin to pray. I believe that in the word of the Lord, it was spoken in Matthew uh, chapter 4, that every place uh, that he said it is written, it was for our learning. Amen? A lot of folks want to know, how, how do you defeat the enemy? Let me tell you something. Jesus uh, showed us how to defeat the enemy uh, in Matthew's gospel chapter 4. When the word of the Lord says, afterwards that he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And the word of the Lord says that Satan came, the devil came, and, and, and tried to tempt him. And he, and, this is what the, and the tempter came to him and said, so If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. I don't know about you, but in a time of fear, I don't think we need to be worried much about what we're going to eat or what we're going to put on or what tomorrow's bringing, but we need to begin to focus our attention on what thus saith the Lord. Because there's coming a time and getting ready to be a time where there's going to be a famine in the land. Now the news media is telling you that there is no famine, everything is good, everything's wonderful, and I believe that's true. Because the scripture says he's not talking about a famine of bread and sausage and eggs and biscuits and gravy. That's not what the famine is. He said the famine that is coming is a famine of the word of God. You think about that. What is challenging us today? Is it the message of the cross? Is it the message of Christ? Is it the word that is driving our lives in order to touch family in this hour? Or is it who got the last roll of toilet paper? Or who's buying up all the pasta? I have not missed a meal. I have not missed anything during this time called pandemic. I'll tell you what I have missed. I have missed the opportunities to touch lives. Hands off. Laying hands on the sick. Praying for those that are sick in body. I have not missed a, a moment in the Word of God. I have not missed a moment in my personal relationship with Him. You can't take that by closing the doors. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can try to limit other things. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't have a whole lot of friends on Facebook. But some of the things that are happening right now to the messages and little, little things that I share, they're exploding. Yes. Where I used to get maybe 20 or 25 at best. Some of them are going viral at literally thousands of views. Do you know why that is? It's because when you lock the door, people get hungry. When you close the door, people get almost, almost fearful of saying, where can I get a word? I can tell you, if you open your Bible up and begin to seek the face of God, you can get a word. You can get a message. You can get a stirring in your spirit. But there is something that we need, and that is the resident power of the Holy Ghost operating in the lives of people. There is something about a corporate anointing. When you get together, but the anointing of God breaks the yoke. A lot of folks just opening the book are only going to be confused. Do you know why that is? Because the enemy would sow confusion in the night. And where confusion is, there is every evil work. You don't believe that? Read the parable of the sower and also the tares. So when Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take it up in a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you. Wednesday night I shared this passage of scripture because everybody that's quoting scripture is out of God. And somebody's going to say, well, how do you know that? It's because the devil just quoted that scripture. Right. Amen? Amen? So what do we have to do? We have to rightly divide what's taking place. We have to have spiritual insight as to what's coming next. And then ask God for direction, purposes, and plans. Continue to worship Him and exalt Him. There's going to be people saying, oh, be quiet. It's not time to praise God. Yes, it's time to praise God. 
It's time to lift up your voice like a trumpet uh, and begin to announce that, that He is soon coming. Amen? Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of folks are making plans and setting things in motion. I believe that you need to be about the Father's business and doing the work of the ministry. But also feel like that while our vision needs to be a hundred year vision, that we need to be living like He's coming in the next ten minutes. Yes, go home, unpack your bags. We're staying for a while. There's work to do. But can I tell you this? You need to be ready at a moment. I know that there's people that are on standby. And while they're doing their regular things and going about their regular business, their sea bag is ready. In other words, they're ready to go at a moment's notice. Amen? So what we have to have an understanding of, the scripture, every time that Jesus said, it is written, is not just for our benefit, but it's in your face to the devil. I'm going to share this with you in closing because I feel like that it's so important that we have our mindset right in the things that God is bringing to us uh, in these last days. You know, the word of the Lord says that in the last days, uh, you're going to see walkers, you're going to see those that are doubters, powers, and do withouters. You're going to see some things uh, in the lives of people. The word of the Lord says it like these, these are spots. This is in Jude, uh, verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead and plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The word of the Lord says, these are murmurers, in verse 16, complainers walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaks great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. In other words, they have a reputation in the world. Well, the word of the Lord says, but beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lust. They, these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Jesus, as he told those that were saying, silence these people. You remember, uh, Brother Bob, we was uh, over there in Capernaum. And we began to shout and we began to get excited in the Lord. And there was a group of ladies that had uh, control over a small Catholic church. And these ladies come out on us. And we were there by the Sea of Galilee. And they're in Capernaum there in that area. And people begin to rejoice. Three buses of us shouting and praising God right there on the grounds. And these people came up, shh, this is a holy place. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The holy place of God is a place of rejoicing. The holy place of God is a place of excitement and encouragement to those that are wounded and broken and need deliverance in their life. So when we begin to understand that I have not seen nor ear heard neither entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us, and the Spirit of the Lord begins to reveal them to us, there's going to be excitement. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's also going to be those that are going to be rejected. You hear what I said? There's also going to be mockers. There's going to be those nut fruits and flakes. I call them serial Christians. That are going to stand back and say, oh, you, you better not do that. Well, let me tell you something. By the word of God, if the people of God stay silent, the rocks and the mountains are going to... Jesus said, no, I find faith when I return. I think that there's going to be a, a tainted faith. There's going to be those that speak of their own concerns. But there's also going to be those of the remnant of the body of Christ uh, that are going to be sold out to hold out uh, uh, and removable in, in, to the place where that they are not going to be silent. So the word of the Lord said, these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Ooh. Knowing and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I serve a God that heals. I serve a God that sets free the captive. Yes. Out of the, the spirit of the mind is bound and he is able to break that yoke of bondage and release them to be in their right mind. 
Oh, glory to God. Watch this. But you, beloved, this is so important. And I believe that this is the, the message of the hour during this week of passion. You, beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. I, I'm going to tell you something. When you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost uh, and you begin to say, Lord, uh, I know that the infirmities of my flesh uh, would cause me not to be able to stand. Uh, the infirmities of my flesh uh, would not allow me to see uh, past the end of my nose. Uh, but through the power of your Spirit, uh, you're going to give me vision. Uh, you're going to give me understanding. Uh, you're going to give me what I have need of uh, to break through uh, this cycle of bondage and death uh, and know that God is able to sustain in every circumstance. In the name of Jesus, you can break the spirit off of your home, off of your community, off of your state, off of this nation that is derived around coronavirus, which I happen to believe was birthed out of a lie. Not everybody will say it, but I do. It was birthed out of a lie. Yes. To bring fear on the nations. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that's not just in your voice. That's in the way that you live. That's in the way that you communicate with people. That's in the way that you love unconditionally. I don't, I don't hold people hostage because they're in fear. I don't judge them because they're in fear. Or even at a point where they're reverencing this thing because they got old people in the house. I don't hold that against them. But can I tell you this? When we begin to stand in the promises of God, you can't compromise with the world. It's almost like the word of the Lord said that I shared with you this morning. You cannot! Drink the cup of the devil and sup with the Lord too. Either you believe him or you don't. Either you're going to trust him or you're not going to. But the word of the Lord says that you that are spiritual, you beloved, building yourselves up of your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I would to God those that are watching my live stream today uh, would seek the Lord and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about praying for enough toilet paper for the rest of the month. He knows what you have need of even before you come and ask. You're looking for toilet paper. Kroger's got it on sale for 79 cents for four rolls. It's available. Some of this would be comical if it wasn't so serious. Trust God. Amen. Believe God. Amen. Seek Him for direction. And know that He is faithful. That promised. This morning I'm going to share with you one more scripture that I'm going to close. As we begin to keep ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord. Some... Have compassion making a difference. Others say with fear, <coughs> pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able, somebody say able. able. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. This morning as we close the service, I, I just want to speak this into your life. That God's grace is sufficient for every need in your life. Those that are watching at home and need to be saved. You can put a message in the bottom of our, our little post there. And let us know that you've committed your life to Christ today, if you would. But can I share with you today that He is near to those that are of a broken and contrite spirit. 
And there's people that are broken today. They don't know what way to turn or which way to go. Because of fear. Can I tell you today that his word declares whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. He is near. And the word of God is near you even in your mouth. And if you believe in your heart, well, there's somebody right now that their, that their grandmother has prayed over them. And they told you things were going to come to pass. And you're wondering, now what do I do? Remember the words that your grandmother spoke to you. Amen. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. He is near to those that are afraid. All you have to do is whisper his name. He'll save you. He'll touch your life. He'll touch your family. And he'll give you a renewed hope. And the confirmation of that word is this. If you believe in your heart and you confess him with your mouth, you shall be saved. With the heart man believes in the righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what do you say, preacher? I'm saying that in this hour, don't be like those that were there in Jerusalem that day. Don't be like those that were in Jerusalem that day that overlooked <coughs> the purpose that God had sent His Son to the lost house of Israel. They rejected Him. Can I tell you? There'll be people that reject Him still because the Word of God says it like this. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. And broad is the way, and wide is the gate, and many there go in that will be lost. I know a lot of people don't like to think about it like this, but when the Word of God speaks concerning a remnant, it lets me know that there's going to be fewer saved in the end than there are that are lost. There's going to be, the Scripture says that hell hath enlarged herself. And as Jesus weeps over the city, I believe that Jesus weeps over Dayton, Ohio. I believe that Jesus weeps over the nation. But he would send the clarion call. Be saved. Be saved today. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in this place. We ask, Lord, that you administer all across not only this sanctuary, but Father, also throughout the Miami Valley. I know that many are preaching the Word of God on Facebook. But I'm asking the Lord for you to give us spiritual access and air superiority over the living rooms and family rooms and kitchens and bedrooms that the Word of God would penetrate the hearts of people. Lord, let the anointing of God break and destroy the yoke of bondage. That your word would prevail and lives would be changed. And Father, as we pray this prayer this morning, we just ask God that there would be countless others that would, would pray also and ask you and invite you to come into their life during this time that there, there is fear, there is torment. <clears throat> Father, with you there is a new day that is dawning. There is a new day, it's a new season. And Father, with you there is going to be hope and renewed hope and the sun will shine again. We thank you for that, Father, and we give you praise. Father, right now, we just honor you and we thank you. Pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Renew my mind. Father, today I ask that you forgive me of my sin. Lord, forgive me of those wrong passions and desires that have caused me to be far from you. Lord, I ask today that you would break the spirit of bondage from off of my life. I ask, Lord, today that you would break the spirit of poverty from off of my family. And that Lord you would give me renewed vision. And hope. I thank you Father for salvation. Because I do believe. That Jesus died for my sins. And not for mine only. But for the sins of the whole world. Open our eyes Lord today. Touch our family. And Father we're careful to give you thanks. And give you praise. As you give us a renewed hope. A new vision. And a new way of living. 
Touch our state, God. Be with the, those that are in authority. Lord, minister to those first responders and those that are doctors and nurses uh, that are prepared and readying themselves for the fears that are greatest upon the people. Sickness. We bind the spirit that's behind coronavirus. And we break the cycle of bondage in the name of Jesus. And Lord, today we loose the anointing of God to break and destroy every yoke. And now, Father, we give you praise as you bring forth a great awakening. Stir within the hearts of individuals. And Lord, give us new strength to move forward and to stand against all the wiles of the devil. We thank you for that today, God. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Bless the Lord. Lord. If you prayed that prayer, you that are watching by live stream, just put a little note.